Um, using your example with the deposit and withdrawal, uh, in the case of an injury, <coughs> calcium deposits uh, locally, right? But in a withdrawal, it probably takes it from all over the cell. Yeah. Is there a case for, like, say, injury or maybe removing a bone spur or something like that, where a withdrawal might be local? Does that happen? Um, as far as a bone spur going away? Yeah. Um, without, I'm not talking like surgically or something. No. I'm talking about the body internally doing it. Yeah. Um, keep in mind, you know, bone spurs and things like that are there for a reason. Okay, if there's extra strain on a bone, like we talked about plantar fasciitis on the, on the on the, let's say if this is the foot, on the bottom of the heel, there's a, on the front of the calcaneus, there's a, some soft tissue that attaches there, and it's getting pulled on, okay? If that force that made it go there in the first place is still there, it's not going to try to get reabsorbed, right? If you take away the reason that, that extra calcium or that spur or something was there, then yeah, maybe it might get reabsorbed. But if that reason that it was there is still there, the body's going to say, well, we still need it. Right? And then you can also have osteoarthritis, right? You get narrowing of your discs. That's stimulating more pressure on the bones. The bone length stays down extra calcium. And in some ways, what it tries to do also is, so this is between two vertebrae. Okay? And now it starts to, the space is narrow. There's a breakdown of the cartilage. The body says, you know, this is not working so good anymore. Let's just close this joint down altogether. So it starts, you know, putting little bridges and stuff to basically try to shut that joint down so that it's not moving anymore. Okay? So again, unless you pump that disc back up, the reason for that osteophyte to be formed in the first place is still there. So it's not going to have a reason to to get reabsorbed. You can't put this Not really. <laughs> I mean, they can do disc replacements and things like that, but you can't just put injection in there and pull it back up. I mean, sometimes when you have, I mean, I guess now while we're on the subject of the vertebrae here, I'd say a lot of times we're talking about the thoracic. So this is posterior, this is the anterior. The way that the trabecular form in the bone, in the vertebra, it's like this. Okay, so is there a weak area on that bone? Yeah. So it's going to be right here. Okay. So when you have compression fractures in the vertebra, they tend to happen on the anterior part. So when you get a compression fracture, it's going to look like this. Okay. So then that's how you get this type of thing going on. You know, if you have osteoporosis, the bones are going to be weaker, so you're going to be more prone to something like that. Okay? There is a procedure where they go in and put a needle into the bone, and they'll do two things. Uh, let's see, I think it's called vertebroplasty, where they'll stick in, they'll pump in some glue, basically to keep it stable. Right? There's another one where they put a little balloon in there, and they pump it up to try to increase the height of the vertebrae. Right? So basically, I mean, the, because of the design of the bone, there's a weaker spots in the bone. And then we'll talk a little bit more about as far as in the hip, because obviously there's a lot of hip fractures when you talk about osteoporosis and things like that. So then we're talking about bone fractures in a general sense. You talk about the position of the bones, okay? Are they still aligned up? with the way they were? Are they displaced? Or has it gone so far where it's actually broken through the skin, where you have a compound fracture? And I tried to watch it a couple times. I think there's a show, I think it's on MTV or something, it's called Scar. Have you heard of that? It's where, you know, a lot of times people have video cameras and they're videotaping themselves, skateboarding or something like that. And they fall and they, you know, get some major fracture of their forearm or elbow. And, uh, you know, it's one of those kind of things you try to watch it, but I'm like, nah, I just don't need to see this kind of thing. <laughs> and 
And so then you talk about the completeness of the break, whereas if you have, let's say you have a long bone, So let's say that's your femur here. Okay, so you have a break. Does it go all the way through, or does it just go part of the way through? So is it a complete break, or is it incomplete? And then the orientation of the bone to the, to the long axis, as far as we talk about spiral, or is it transverse fracture, or oblique, or different orientations. And then also, like I say, if it penetrates the skin. When it, the bone sticks out of the skin, it's a compound fracture. So then, as far as the position, like I say, either is it a displaced fracture or non-displaced. Okay, so let's say you're treating somebody and they said, yeah, well, I have, you know, broke my, broke my arm a while ago. And, you know, you're, you're not going to be treating them right when they come in off of the, they fell on their skateboard or something. But you want to have some general sense about the fracture and say, well, is it displaced or non-displaced? Um, you may not necessarily, your patient may not, talk in those types of terms where you might read x-ray reports and things like that. Or you might be looking at x-ray and you want to say, okay, well, is it, I can see the break there, but I can see everything's still lined up. Or I can see that it's out of place. What are the implications for us, for example, if it's displaced or not displaced? Are there certain things that you want to do? Or to um, not necessarily. It's just that you know that it's more severe if it's displaced versus not displaced. If it's displaced, Either they're going to go in and fix it with pins and rods and screws and things like that, or if it's not displaced that much, then you know you may look at the X-ray and the bone may be out of kilter like that, but it wasn't so bad that they uh, pinned it. So it's just an indication of the severity of it. And so the incomplete is where it doesn't go through all the way, and then linear. It's where it's parallel to the long axis, so linear fracture would be something like this up and down, whereas transverse would be across like that. And then, like I say, compound is going to be an open fracture, and then simple just means it's closed where it hasn't broken through the skin. Most of this stuff is just so that you can understand the language about fractures and understand to, you know, somebody says, oh, I had such and such fracture. You say, well, you know, I know that's a pretty bad one, or oh, that's not so bad. And communed means that there's a lot of different fragments. So let's say it breaks into a bunch of different pieces. Something gets shattered. You know, somebody says, well, I shattered my leg, so that the fracture's going to be into a bunch of different pieces. And then a spiral one is going to be something where it kind of goes like that, where it's spiraling around the bone. And then a depressed fracture, we talked about that like in the skull. You know, if somebody gets hit by a blunt object, the fracture depresses in. And then a compression fracture is going to be something more like this. A lot of times you, you talk about it in the vertebra, you talk about it in the calcaneus, which is in the foot. Let's say if somebody you know, falls from a a multi-story building or something like that, they could land on their feet, it could compress in the feet, it could compress in the vertebra. And then epiphyseal, that's going to be significant in uh, growing, people that are still growing, where that epiphyseal plate, if that gets injured, then that's going to affect the growth. So let's say if you're talking about in the, in the femur or the knee or something like that, sometimes people can have a fracture in there, and then as a result of that, one leg, the leg length can be different. And then a green stick is like if you've ever taken it, tried to take a green branch of a tree and you try to break it, it's going to bend kind of, it doesn't snap. The green stick is where bone kind of bends and it doesn't really completely snap or fracture. And what happens is that, you know, if it bends, it'll kind of break. You know, they break on this side and then the other side's intact. So that's going to be common in kids because their bones are going to be a little more flexible. 